Today we have on Dylan Ogline on the Business Source podcast. After growing his digital marketing agency into a seven figure agency, generating over a million in sales annually, Dylan Ogline turned his focus to helping other people start and grow their own hyper profitable digital agency. Dylan undoubtedly believes that anybody can start and build their own digital agency that will allow them to have more freedom and live a life with purpose and meaning. And he wants to give everyone possible the tools to do just that. You want to tell us a little bit about yourself, Dylan? Absolutely, Brent. Uh, thank you very much for, for having me. I'll say that first. Um, but yeah, uh, so I own a digital marketing agency called Ogline Digital. And uh, I also, well, as far as Ogline Digital, we provide uh, digital marketing solutions for uh, typically blue collar businesses. But basically, we are doing digital marketing management, Facebook, Google ads, uh, that, that sort of thing. Uh, and then I also have a, uh, an education company where I teach people, I have a training program where I teach people how to start and grow their own, uh, digital marketing agency. So that's what I'm currently working on and where I'm at now. Tell us a little bit about your beginning in business, starting a business at 14, dropping out of high school (laughs) and ending up with a million dollars in debt. That's a crazy story. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, uh, it sucks. It's not fun. <laughs> it's not, uh, uh, it's not a great beginner story, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's, that's the sum of it. I, I started my first business when I was 14, uh, selling cell phones on eBay. Uh, this was prior to iPhone age and I'm, I'm 31 now. So this is prior to, you know, going back to what would it have been 20, you know, 20, uh, 2004, somewhere around there, 2003, 2004. And, uh, basically the best cell phones were European cell phones were far ahead of the United States. So they had like all the, you know, the early smartphones. So I, I totally don't remember how, but somehow I ended up with like a wholesaler agreement. Uh, I like signed up for this website that they did. They provided the cell phones wholesale and somehow, some way they accepted me and I could get, uh, you know, like obviously the cell phones at wholesale costs. So then I would have to, you know, pay to ship them to the United States and, you know, they would sell on eBay for like 400, 500 bucks. And I would be able to buy them for like 300 bucks. Uh, that was it. That was, you know, not nothing fancy. So that lasted for, you know, maybe six months, maybe a little bit longer than I don't remember. And my merchant account got shut down because they found out that I was under the age of 18. So that, uh, went out in a blaze of glory. <laughs> Uh, but you know, fast forward a year or so, and, uh, I might've, I don't know if I quit high school before, before that business got shut down or not. I don't remember, but, uh, so yeah, then I dropped out of high school and, uh, spent the next 12 years or so just in a lot of terribleness bouncing around from one business idea to the, to the next. And, uh, finally in, uh, 2016, uh, I just scrapped everything. This is when I was a million dollars in debt. I was making maybe 50 grand a year. So just no, I didn't know what a vacation was. Um, sleep was a, was a nice fantasy to have and, uh, scrapped everything, just focused on one thing. And that was the agency focused on one service. That was the digital or the digital marketing management. And, uh, you know, very quickly things started to turn around and go in the right direction. Uh, and here I am. That is, 14 or 15 years condensed <laughs> into one to two minutes. How did your family feel about you dropping out of high school and ending up with a million dollars in debt? Uh, well, they never knew about the debt. Uh, I don't think I've, I've ever, uh, I've publicly talked about it, but I don't think, I don't think any of them even, even know. Uh, as far as the, the dropping out of high school, um, my brother dropped out of high school. My dad dropped out of high school. So like that wasn't uh, far fetched. But they definitely wanted me to to go to college. Uh, that was that was just that was my expectation as the youngest was to go to college. And uh, I convinced them to let me, quote unquote, quit school and take um, like homeschool. Uh, it, back then, it was a lot different than what it is now. But so I had to like pay for it. I had to buy my books. It cost me like two, two grand, maybe three grand. 
And uh, they were like, oh, okay, you know, that makes sense. Sure. And I just never opened the books. I never took any tests or anything. And then finally I was like, oh, what do you want me to do? You want to re- redo 10th grade? And they were like, no. So I just convinced them somehow and they let me quit. How did you get into digital marketing and why digital marketing over starting an- another business or some other venture like real estate? Oh, well, I did. I did do some real estate investing. That's a good question, though. Uh, so I I forget what book I picked it up. It might have been the 20, I think it's 21 or 22 immutable laws of marketing. I, I don't remember. But somehow I picked it up like while I was building that first like cell phone business. And I picked up that like the where things were going with digital marketing, like like how how advertising was like this huge thing. But digital advertising, digital marketing, at the time, I don't even think Facebook had been started, but uh, like Google ads had just like started and like, wow, like banner ads, like this is going to change the world. And the simple fact that with digital advertising, digital marketing, you could track your results like pretty accurately. And this is still in the, this is prehistoric times (laughs) back in 2003, 2004. Uh, it, it, that just blew my mind because I, I picked up or I read somewhere that you could buy growth. Like once you figure it out, once you get it going, you could buy growth. And I was like, all I need to do is eventually just figure that out. And then I can just pay to buy growth. Uh, it's, it sounds stupid, sounds silly, but that just blew my world. So that's, you know, again, this is the infancy of Google ads and things like that. That just changed my world, changed everything. Uh, and I became fascinated with it. Uh, and this is still possible today. It's not one of those things where you invested in it while it's little and then it grew when you just took the money when it grew. Right. Oh, I mean, as far as like digital marketing today, it is, it, it gets better and better every single day. Uh, sure. Things were cheaper back then, you know, like Google ads. I remember the first Google AdWords I ever did. It was like five cents a click. And for anybody who knows anything about Google ads, like now, if you're paying like $5 a click, you're like, Ooh, that's, that's pretty cheap. Uh, so it's gotten more expensive, but the efficient, the efficiency of, especially Facebook, I mean, Facebook is just ridiculously efficient and, uh, how they, how the system, the AI can specifically target you, uh, or target your potential customers is just, it, it changes it, it's not even it's it's like minor leagues to major leagues you know, if you're talking like comparing different types of, of advertising and different types of marketing uh to jump back though to answer one of your questions you talked about like real estate and whatnot during that like 12 years of pain and suffering and terribleness and getting nowhere and being broke and being tired and not going on vacation uh i did i i went in so many different directions and that was the mistake i made was like in 2016, when it clicked to me and, and I just focused on the agency work, I had like 10 different business projects. Uh, I was doing like, I did own some real estate. I did, I, I was, I, when I scrapped everything, I had just closed on a, a flip I did. I, I flipped a house, lost like a couple thousand dollars. Uh, I was doing Kindle publishing. I was building a web, like a jobs website. Uh, I was building a lyrics website, like all these stupid ideas. So it wasn't that I, you know, wasn't doing other things. Uh, I was, um, but it was cause I was always chasing the shiniest object I had definitely shiny object syndrome for sure. Right. I was just thinking along those lines that you were spread out all over the place mm-hmm. and, um, you're saying that was a mistake, but that led you to digital marketing. So I was just curious about that. Sure. It was, I mean, for me, kind of like, while during that, that, that phase, I was always doing some kind of like agency work. So, uh, you know, I was building websites. It was, it was like almost like how I paid the bills. I was building websites. If you needed a banner ad, I was your guy. If you needed a, a logo, I could do it for you. If you needed a PowerPoint, I was your man. Like I, I was always kind of, I was like the jack of all trades. I was miserable. I was doing everything for everybody in every industry and in every business ever <laughs> and making no money. Uh, but that's just, that was how I thought you had to do it and realize that mistake. 
luckily when I was still in my twenties. What is the laptop lifestyle and how do you build it? Uh, so have you, have you read the book, the four hour work week? No, I need to get to it. <laughs> read it, read it. <laughs> if you haven't bought it, go on Amazon, buy it. it it'll, it's on it'll the change. list. <laughs> <laughs> that, that book, uh, changed my, my life when, so f- for me, I grew up in like a small town and like the idea of, you know, kind of having an office and a fancy business suit and like going to work every day. Like that was just the dream. Uh, and then I picked up the four hour work week, which kind of talks about like a different lifestyle, like how to do things is just a different way. So the life, the laptop lifestyle is it, for me, what that means is essentially uh, being able to work when you want on what you want, where you want. So it's not about, you know, not working. I think, I think life would be boring if you're not working on something that you're passionate about. It's, you know, not working on something that strains your soul or working in a cubicle nine to five. Again, it's about working on something that you want to work on when you want to work on it, where you want to work on it. So a lot of people don't, I mean, kind of things are different now with COVID, but a lot of people don't want to spend their lives, you know, going on vacation once or twice a year. They want to travel. And I have built my life in a way where I can travel again, prior to COVID travel and build my business at the same time. So that's kind of what the laptop lifestyle is all about. As some inspiration to our listeners, can you tell us what it is like living the four hour work week? Uh, so I, I would comment quickly that uh, the four hour work week is not about actually working only four hours. Uh, it is more about the freedom. It's more about freedom. So I, I still work probably 60 hours a week, uh, especially with COVID because I don't have anything else to do. Uh, but it, I just want to point that out real quick. Uh, what was your original question, though? How is it? <laughs> I apologize. Um, just inspire a guest to want to live that life. And what is it? Sure, sure. So so what it is, is again, being able to work on what you want, when you want, where you want. Uh, yeah, I, I would define that, that that's what it is. How is it? Uh, in, inspiration. Uh, that, that's a great question, actually. I, uh, I'm i going to tell this with a story. <laughs> so I was mentoring this, uh, this younger guy. Uh, I forget how, I think I met him in like an industry event or something like that. He was, and this was probably a year ago that I had this conversation with him. Uh, He's from the same small town in in Pennsylvania that I'm from. Works a dead end job, you know, like fast food, you know, making what, $8 an hour or something like that. Uh, I think he's in college. I think he's in college, but he just, he has that itch to do something different. He doesn't want to live this boring life of, you know, go to college and then pay off your college debt. And the next thing you know, you're 60 and then maybe you get a couple years of retirement. And, you know, I, I think I took him out for coffee one time and we're just sitting there chatting and I'm trying to give him some, some advice and whatnot. And he asked me something similar, like, like, how is it? And whatnot? Like, is it, is it, I think he, I think his, his specific question was like, is it as great as I think it's going to be? And I said, absolutely not. It's not. Like in your mind, you know, for him, travel is a huge, was a huge thing. He's like, in your mind, when you imagine, you know, you're in some European city or some Southeast Asian city and you have like the whole city in front of you, uh, you're building your business, you know, maybe you're not making a ton of money. That doesn't matter. But you have the freedom to be in this far flung city, to explore, to travel, work when you want. As awesome as you think it is, no matter how high your expectation is, it is so brutally wrong. Because no matter how high your expectation is, it's not high enough. It is so far beyond what you could possibly expect. It is a infinite, infinitely greater than what you imagine. That would be my answer. <laughs> Really? That's, I've heard that it's lonely at the top, that once you get up there, you're free to do whatever you want, but there's nobody else that could do it. All your friends are at work. It's the opposite. Then you're just free. Would you say? Uh, I, you know what? I think the, 
I think the world overall is changing. I, I, I think a lot of people are seeing, I, don't know, I think it's maybe started with the millennial generation, which, which I am a millennial. I don't know about you, but uh, I think people are seeing it different. They don't want to live that way. So when I've been out traveling, you'd be surprised how many other people are, are doing the same thing. Uh, can, you know, when you are traveling, you know, if you're doing it solo, by all means, sure, things can get lonely, but you'd be surprised how many other people are out there who are, you know, expats who don't want to just spend their lives in a cubicle and you can meet people and you can make friends on the road for sure. The real question at this point then is how do you achieve that? How do you achieve the four hour work week? Uh, how do you achieve the four hour work week? Um, I would say focus would be, would be the first thing focus on, uh, focus on one single business project or one single idea that you have, at least for me, like that was just, you know, the brutal advice that I needed to get was, you know, just focus on one thing. Um, yeah, do that. And I also think I'm going to, I'm going to answer this in a roundabout way. Uh, I think mentorship or at least having somebody to, who, who is, you are the sum average of the five closest people in your world. So if you hang out with a bunch of other people who work nine to five jobs, you're probably going to work a nine to five job. If you hang out with five people who aren't very fit and you want to be more fit, you're probably not going to be athletic because you're around people who aren't athletic. So the easiest hack that you can make is surround yourself with people who either want to go where you want to go or are already where you want to be. And the cheat code to that is that they don't have to be like, you don't have to have ever met them. They can be uh, books that you read. They could be dead. It could be Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> it could be George Washington. It could be anybody. Uh, I mean, it's obviously better to have somebody who is alive and like somebody you can point to. But like, I, you know, two huge influences in my life are Tim Ferriss and Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki wrote The Rich, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, uh, which is another book that I highly recommend any, everybody read. Uh, I've never met either of those two people, but they've been massive influences on my life. And I think just having that somebody to point to like, Hey, this person did it. So obviously I can do it too. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you specialize in the digital marketing agency. Is that a good way to achieve um, freedom? I guess. It's very self-serving for me to say yes. Uh, but I mean, obviously for me, the, the answer to that is yes. Uh, the type of business that I have, uh, you know what? I'm actually going to, I'm going to go even further. I'm going to step back and, and give a lesson that was given to me. Uh, I talked about like in you know 2016, I scrapped a bunch of business projects, right? How that happened was I randomly got a call from a mentor and a long-term mentor of mine, I hadn't heard from him in years, uh, calls me up and, you know, we exchange pleasantries. I lie to him. I tell him everything's great as you do. And then, you know, he eventually, you know, we dive in and I'm like, no, my life sucks. I'm up to my eyeballs in debt. Everything's terrible. Everything sucks. And he, he says to me that I need to stop trying to build an airline and start drilling for oil. <laughs> And that kind of sounds silly, I know. But what the lesson was is that uh, the airline industry is extremely difficult to make money in. And the sure, people do make money in that industry, but they're typically the best of the best of the best. Uh, and you could be like, if, you, if you're just like good, but not great in that industry, you're probably not going to make a lot of money. You probably are going to lose money. With oil... As an example, it doesn't mean it's easy, but you can be just good 
in that industry and you're probably going to make money. I know with COVID things have changed, but this is 2016. This is when oil was like $80 a barrel. <laughs> but, but the lesson was, is like, you want to, what he goes on to explain this to me is like, you want to be, you want to focus on a business idea where you don't have to be incredible. You don't have to be the best in the world at it to hit your, your financial goals, which at the time, like all I wanted to hit was six figures. Just, I, I that was like my goal. If I could just get to a hundred thousand a year. And so like, I, I you know, I had like a, the, the Kindle idea, like, you know, the most, the best of that uh, in that industry, you're making like four or five grand a month. Well, I wasn't going to be the best of the best. I was probably going to be average. So that's why I only ever made like three or 400 a month. The lyrics website and, and all these other stupid ideas I had were just low margin businesses. They were airlines. So the advice was is just focus on the high margin business or the business that has the easiest chance of of success. You know, you're not going to hit a home run on every at bat. So just aim for the things where if you hit a single, uh, you're still going to be successful. So that for me was the digital agency work, but going even further, it was just the digital ad management service, uh, which is a high margin business, uh, and you know, easy to scale and easy to grow. It's, it, it's not an easy business overall. I mean, our whole businesses are, are hard, but it's, it's a lot easier than, you know, building out a Kindle publishing business. Uh, so again, self-serving, but yes, I, I do believe that like a digital agency is, is something that could, it's an easy high margin business that can, if you run it right, you can definitely have that quote unquote four hour work week life, like what is it? laptop lifestyle. So, for our listeners, what exactly is a digital agency? What does yours do? And what is it like building one? Sure. So the digital, the rough term of digital agency can mean all sorts of things. It can be a web design agency. It can be uh, a company that does, um, you know, videography. It can be a company that does just logo design. Uh, basically any kind of like digitally creative work. Um, your, your, you know, video production business, that's a digital agency, I would say. Uh, what does my company do? Uh, so Ogline Digital just does digital ad management. So w when we onboard a client, uh, very rarely we might build a website for them, but we are, we are taking them on to help them grow their online presence and get typically more clients, more customers, more leads. Like at the end of the day, that's what they're after. And essentially what we're doing is we are creating their Facebook ads. We are, uh, you know, writing their Facebook ads or Google ads or whatever, uh, creating the landing pages that the, the potential customer or client goes to. Uh, and we just, we manage all that and we charge a 10% fee for whatever their monthly ad spend is. So if a, a client spends $25,000 at the end of the month, we send them an invoice for, uh, $2,500. That, that is dumbing it down to, to what we do. That's really interesting. So you specialize in that certain area, mm -hmm. but you also teach people help the, do you help them develop in different areas? Uh, with, with my training, with my education company, my training program. Yes. So the, the training program that I have is called agency 2.0, uh, and, and, the, you know, the tagline, what, what we're doing is it's a six week program. Uh, the goal, my goal is to be able to take anybody, uh, I like to use the example of a soccer mom or a college student, you know, who's 21, you know, knows nothing about the digital marketing world, knows nothing about starting their own business. Uh, have that type of person come into the program. Uh, and within six weeks, they know everything. They have everything in place to build a six figure digital agency. Uh, do I just teach that? No, like week two of the program is all on mindset. I think mindset when it comes to business is critical. So week two, we don't talk it. I mean, you know, I've mentioned business, but it's all just about your mindset. Uh, but, uh, obviously most of the program is simply about building, building a successful digital agency. 
Um, can you elaborate on this program a little bit more? How can people find out about it and learn more about it? Sure. So it's, uh, you just go to my personal website, which is dylanogline.com. Uh, probably going to have it in the show notes or something like that. Uh, right now I am not accepting any new, as of us recording this, uh, which is election day, 2020, uh, we, uh, we're not accepting any new students because I'm still building out the newest version of the program, but you can come to the website and you can join the waiting list. That's great. So what are your, are you still in real estate? What other businesses are you still in at this point? Nothing. Uh, I got out of, uh, other than my, my main house, I, well, I also own a piece of land, but, uh, but, uh, it's not an investment property or anything like that. Uh, but no, I've, I completely got out of all real estate. I got out of every other business. Uh, I just have, uh, just have the agency and the education company. And the only reason I focused on the education is I've been blessed to have uh, coaches and teachers and mentors. You know, it always feels like it's, you know, the right person at the right time. And uh, I've been blessed to have those people in my life. So I've always had this uh, kind of interest in being some kind of coach or some kind of teacher some kind of, you know, mentor, you know, people who are just starting out. Uh, and, uh, you know, if, over the years I've been doing some kind of coaching or teaching. And uh, now that my agency, you know, is, is, is gone to, you know, I got it to the point where I wanted to, to get it to uh, financially. I got an incredible team in place and uh, it, it requires very little of my time. So now I'm able to focus on, I mean, 95% of my time on the education company. For those people who are trying to find a mentor, you seem like you've had a lot of luck in finding mentors. How do you do that? I would, I would say I haven't had luck. Uh, I, it was the, the whole idea of you are the sum average of the five closest people uh, in your world. That's that I learned. That was probably one of the first self-help. I, I don't even remember what book it was or where I read it or anything like that. But uh, the very, very first business or self-help book that I ever picked up was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Robert Kiyosaki has been a mentor of mine since then. Uh, and then I picked up another book or something where I learned the whole, you know, the five closest people in your circle. So I just actively uh, would was searching for people or you know, people, you know, again, like Tim Ferriss, I, I was searching for people who they have the life that I want to have or a very similar life to what I want to have. And just, just focused on that instead of having 50 different mentors or, you know, following 50 different people, I just focused on the, the, you know, the two or three people who were, um, you know, where, where I wanted to be. I love the information I'm doing the same thing. I'm studying Donald Bren right now, who is the richest real estate investor in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's been pretty interesting just to learn about those different people and their ventures and how you could apply it to your life. So that's a great tip. Absolutely. And and one thing that, that I would recommend, you know, say you're doing real estate is there's probably like 50,000 people who are teaching real estate or 50,000 coaches in the real estate industry or whatever, pick one, just pick one and follow them. <laughs> As, you know, they, they kind of sound silly, but if you're, it doesn't matter. You know, most of these people are probably successful, right? So it doesn't, you're not going to be able to pick the single best teacher or coach or mentor. I mean, you know, like real estate, it might be the most successful real estate investor or, or whoever has the biggest portfolio or, or anything like that. But I'm saying like who has the highest quality training or, or things like that. You're not going to be able to, to narrow that down. So don't even try. Instead, pick the person, uh, the coach, the mentor, you know, whoever that you kind of like just vibe the most with. I, I think it's, it is as silly as that. Like the person who, when they jump on a podcast or 
you know, you read something they write or, uh, you know, they make a video that you're like, I want to consume this content. Just like find that one person, uh, and just follow them and just follow their advice. Uh, Is it going to be absolutely perfect? Probably not. But what matters most is that you actually take ruthless, ruthless action. Yeah, for sure. That is crazy good advice. I hope that all the listeners understand the depth of what he said. And if they didn't go back and re-listen to it, because that is crazy good advice. Thank you. I appreciate that one. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, definitely. So what's it like being a mentor? Um, How do you connect to people? Uh, you mean like, how do I, how do I get students? Yeah. How do you find those students? Uh, sure. Sure. So, uh, so first, what is, what is it like being a mentor? It's definitely the most rewarding work I've ever done. Uh, it, especially when I, like, I look back at, uh, <laughs> like, uh, you know, say, say I onboard a client for, for Ogline digital and, you know, say they're doing half a million a year in sales or whatever. And they, they, they come on as a client and, you know, we get things rolling, we get their marketing growing and they're able to go from, you know, half a million to a million dollars a year in sales. That's cool. That's, that's awesome. Right. But you know, you just, the business owner is just making more money now. Right. With, with the coaching and the mentoring and, and, and having like students come into my training program, that has been just ridiculously rewarding as, as cliched and as silly as that sounds, it is just, uh, it, like I, when, when somebody comes, comes on and, you know, they're doing maybe two, maybe they already have an agency or they, they have a job where they're making like, you know, two or three grand a month. Uh, and they want to quit that job and they want to start their own business and they get going and, you know, three months into the program, they have an agency where they're making five grand a month or six grand a month or seven or whatever. I, I mean, is that setting the world on fire? Is that changing the world? <laughs> Absolutely not. But that changed that person's life. And that is completely different than just helping a business grow. I mean, by all means, I love the agency work. But, if, you know, for me, I I am in an extremely privileged position in my life. Like, you know, have I worked hard? No doubt about it. Have I made sacrifices? Undoubtedly. Have I made smart plays? Sure thing. But I've also just been really lucky here and there. You know, what if I had never picked up Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Or if I had never picked up the four-hour work week? I consider those things blessings or luck, you know, whatever. And I kind of think the purpose of life is to take the luck that you've been given, the blessing you've been given, whatever you want to call it, and kind of spread that around a little bit uh, the best you can. And with, with the education company and helping students, I feel like I'm actually doing that. So it's, uh, it's extremely rewarding, uh, extremely rewarding work. How do I find students? Uh, that was your other question. Uh, Facebook ads. (laughs) Uh, when I, when I started, um, so my program's called agency 2.0. The, it's not because it's the second version. Uh, it's actually the third version. The first version, all I did was I reached out to people who I'd kind of just, who I'd met at like industry events or whatever, uh, who I'd kind of, kind of done a little bit of mentoring or they just simply had asked me like, Hey, how do I start my own business and, and things like that. And I just reached out to them, uh, and was like, Hey, I'm starting this program. I'm going to make some videos, throw them in Google drive, and it's just going to show you how to start your own agency. You want to join it's 300 bucks or whatever. I don't remember what the price was. And I think I got like eight people. (laughs) That was, that was it. And it wasn't about the money. It was just like, I wanted to see like, okay, can I actually, can I actually teach people to do this? And, uh, all of them took action. All of them took result or all of them got results. Uh, and then I was like, okay, I want to see if I can actually teach people who, uh, I've never spoken with and never spoken to before. Uh, and just did some Facebook ads. My goal was to get a hundred people into the program. And once I, once I hit that, shut off Facebook ads and just spent like the next year, just learning from people, just seeing, you know, what do people really need to know to build their own agency? So that's how I get people to Facebook ads. 
I have one more question about your mentoring program. Sure. So I've always wondered how to price a mentoring program because you price it too low. Then people are going to think it's crap because it's cheap or mm -hmm. it's free, but you price it too high. And then people are thinking this person just after my money. So how do you go about pricing it? Uh, how do you go about price? I, w what you said is, is totally, totally tr true. Uh, I'm actually going to expand on that, that story I just told about, you know, the first like seven or eight people that I got to join. Uh, what happened was, and I'll, I'll bring this around and I'll answer your question. But what happened was, is I, this is probably like 2016 or something like that. When I, when I was, was doing mentoring, but I wasn't charging because I enjoyed it. It was just like, I'd meet people and I'd be like, Hey, you know, they'd be like, Hey, how do, how do I start my own business? Uh, I want to start an agency or I want to start this business or I want to start that. And I was like, yeah, sure. I'll help you. And absolutely nobody took any action. Absolutely. Nobody got any results. Like it was terrible. <laughs> and I, I kind of was like, Oh, I, I guess I can't do this. And I was thinking, I think it was like 2016, 2017. Uh, I was at a mastermind event. Uh, like, like I pay for training. I still do to this day. And uh, I was at a mastermind event and I, I think it was like a dinner or something. And I just happened to be sitting next to this lady who she has a very successful training business. Uh, I think she has you know several different training programs. I don't, I forget what industry she's in, uh, but she's very successful and, you know, started talking and I straight up asked her, I was like, listen, I know how to do what I'm doing but none of these people are taking any action. Like, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> like, am I just a terrible teacher? And she's like, what well, the problem is, is that they don't have any skin in the game. You know, they're, you're just giving this advice for free. You know, like you're sending people books for free. Uh, you're, you're jumping on calls with them for free, which is great. You, you know, you have a good heart to do that, but you're not going to get, they're not going to do anything because they, they have no skin in the game. They're just, you know, they need to be committed to it. So she was like, you know, actually go to them and be like, I want your money. I, I, you know, it's not greed. It's their commitment. And don't be like 50 bucks. It's got to be like at least a couple hundred dollars and, and, and be honest with them. Be like, Hey, if you don't get any results, I'll give you your money back, which is what I did. Uh, she's like, and, and just, just see what happens then. And that's exactly what I did. I went home. I just, you know, I maybe 15 people on an email list so just went through the emails and emailed those people and was like, Hey, I'm doing this training program, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be in Google drive a couple hundred bucks. Uh, I think it was like three or 400. I forget. And all of a sudden, all of them took action. All of them got results. So, so yeah, if you, if you just charge nothing, if you're just giving stuff away for free. People aren't going to take any action. Um, uh, now, what do you charge? That, I mean, that's an excellent question. I am, it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing something where people, is gonna, people are going to have a monetary gain from it, you can certainly charge more. Uh, but I, I don't believe in hiding behind high, low prices. So if you're charging somebody like $3,000, $4,000, uh, know, I, I know of programs that are six, eight, ten thousand dollars $10,000, that program better be pretty good. And by charging that much, it forces you, the creator, to actually provide value. You know, if you're doing a $99 masterclass, like you could, you know, it could be really bad. And it's like, well, it was 99 bucks. What'd you expect? So I, I am a firm believer in charging more. And if, you know, if it's something, you know, like building an agency or building a, a podcast business, I mean, I don't know, whatever. Uh, whatever it is, if there's like a monetary gain, uh, you know, maybe spread out the payments, you know, maybe do a payment plan or something like that, but charge premium prices. Uh, it forces your students to be committed. Uh, and it also, uh, it forces you, the creator to be, to be committed as well and to provide good quality. And I believe always back it up with a, you know, hundred percent guarantee. You know, I don't want somebody's money if they don't get results. Right. That's a, that's right on. I think that's a good place to go to our final questions. First of all, what is your favorite book? 
I uh, can't answer with one. I'm going to have to say two, and that would be four hour work week and rich dad, poor dad. Undoubtedly. That's perfect. I'll put those in the show notes. Those are both good, good books. Absolutely. If you had to restart, what would you do? Would you even be in the same industry? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I think that's a, <laughs> I never, uh, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to ramble. I, I, I think that's always a bad way to look at things because you know, if you would have asked me, you know, a year ago, two years ago, would you be where you are now? I'd be like, absolutely not. I, you know, there's no way. <laughs> so, you know, would I be where, would I do this? I, I absolutely love what I do now. So I think that's, that's, that's how I'll answer that. <laughs> I love what I do now. And one more, I think um, this one's going to be obvious from our past questions, but how did you learn how to start a business? How did I learn how to start a business? Uh, hmm. I, I think I just uh, picked up Rich Dad Poor Dad <laughs> and that kind of, uh, uh, I, I think it's a lot, if you People overthink it. If everybody understands business, it's I have a product, I have a service, and I sell it. That's that's it. Don't overthink it. Like just take action. Um, so I, my inspiration or like what drove me to get into business was was that book, Rich Dad Poor Dad. But uh, but how did how did I? I just did it. Which is not to. I mean, nobody likes to hear that answer. <laughs> I recognize that, but just do it. Just, you know, just everybody understands commerce. Everybody understands capitalism. You know, if you've ever had a job or you've ever done anything or you've ever gone into Walmart, you have a basic understanding of what you need to do to so just do it. Just take action. That would be my answer. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And I really appreciate you sharing your time. I learned a lot and I hope the listeners learned as much as I did. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much for having me. Definitely. We'll see you.